Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Got a new addition here today uh, to the boring mill. Got a 30 inch CNL rotor table that I picked up. Uh, don't have really any idea what kind of shape it's in. It was essentially an auction type of deal. But uh, here it is. Um, it's in need of some major cleaning before I can really do any inspecting on it. Only things I'm really after here is whether or not it sits parallel to the table. And if it does that, then that's all I needed to do. I'm not doing a full out restoration on this thing at this time. I just need to get it in operation so I can do a job that I have in mind using it for to do. So. And we'll start, I guess, at the bottom. I'll pick this thing up and be sure the bottom's cleaned off and I'll get it down on the mill table, be sure it's cleaned off. I've already mostly stoned and cleaned the mill table, but it probably needs a little more cleaning. So if I put this thing on here and it should happen to be really good, I may leave it on here for a while. Uh, rotor table would be handy to have. I kind of wish it was a square table, but and for the money, this is where it was at. I couldn't afford any square tables that were out there floating around. I think a four foot would probably be ideal, but uh, a five would work as well, I think. But for now, we're stuck with a little 30 inch. So, so we're gonna use, we get this picked up and we'll see about cleaning off this underside. Well, looks like it's a good thing I didn't pay too much money for it because some winner's been here and filled up the factory slots with weld and milled slots on an angle for some reason. That would clock his thing on the mill table. Uh, they must have done that for whatever they were using it for. But... I could try and cut that back out, but uh, for now I'm just going to index it in and clamp it down and hope it stays put. Maybe use a couple stop blocks. But I need to get all this funkus cleaned off here so this thing will sit flat. So, I'm going to get some towels and I'll get after that mess and bring you back. Well, that's round one of cleaning. As you can see, it's a lot better, but probably still not there yet. So my next step's gonna be to take this stone and I'll spray it down with Simple Green and rub on that and try and get a nice, uh, smooth, clean look to it. So, Got to keep the stone wet and keep it clean or it builds up. So just take that and rub it on here. It knocks any of the burrs off too, in addition to kind of cleaning the rust up. See all the rest on there.
You can probably see all those little shiny spots. Those are the original scrape marks, I'd say. And I'm showing pretty decent coverage there. Some will say I've got that stone pretty good. So, rinse and repeat for the rest of it. Now, hopefully, you can make out the uh, scrape marks on there. Mm -hmm. See the damage that's occurred over the 70 or 80 years, or whatever this thing's been around. So, it's a big, that's a shame about them filling in those. Uh, slots. I don't know why, really why they did that, but anyway, maybe at some point I can stand this thing up on the mill and recut them, but for now, I'm just going to use it as is. So, got that side looking pretty good. Now I need to do the same thing to my mill table, get it cleaned off real good, and then sit this thing down and hopefully there'll be nothing in between it, and it'll be nice and true. So I'll get that cleaned up, same method, bring you back. All right, table's all cleaned off. I stoned it, hit the high spots. Uh, be sure nothing, no burr sticking up. Now, since I don't know how long it's going to be down for, I'm going to go ahead and spray some light oil on here, keep it from resting. All right, so I'm sure there's some thickness to oil, but I'd say most of it will squeeze out in the end. All right, I think I've got this thing clamped down, so I guess now I need to clean off this top. So, start with the sample green.
Alright, it's clean number one, so. Give another spray down. Well, it's now I'm going to get something on here and indicate it in and see what kind of shape this thing's in. Okay, so check it for parallelism, I guess.
far as that goes. based off the travels of the mill onto a just common ground uh, 246 block I use for setup. So, you know, there's plenty of places for small errors to stack up here to amount to pretty good sized errors. So the fact that I'm showing less than a thousandths is good for me. And, you know, you can always shim and move your part if you have to. But, uh, you know, between the, the wear and the ways of the machine travels and the flatness of this table and the flatness of the block and the flatness of the mill table and putting it all together and having it come out to that standard, I'm uh, satisfied with that, that that's going to be good. It puts me where I want to be. So now I can do the job I want to do where I need precision of a decent tolerance but uh, I need to be able to rotate the part 90 degrees so I want to do it in one setup and that way again you're not stacking errors of setting up multiple times to do one operation so uh, the fewer times that you clamp and move the part uh, once you get it indicated in the, end, the better it is and the table feels good and smooth so my, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll do the job. So, hope you enjoyed getting to see how I went about getting this trued up. And I still looks pretty good. I slide the block around on top of it and I get the same indicating readings. So, I think it's in good shape for doing the job. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.